Hey everyone. So a couple of months ago, I made a video about uh, installing the new Ubuntu 20 um, on a Raspberry Pi 4 in a headless way. So without any wired network connection or display attached or keyboard or whatever. And um, yeah, that video became pretty successful, but uh, also there were a lot of comments by various people saying that this is not working and that should be updated and so on. And uh, these comments, these complaints mostly focused on uh, Wi-Fi connection. So today I decided that, um, okay, set the current video aside, let it uh, go for next week and for this week do this update video and let's see what happens since then. And uh, yeah, let's revisit this topic. First of all, we will start exactly the same way we did with the um, previous iteration of this video. So, yeah, just uh, let's download um, Ubuntu 20 uh, from the Ubuntu uh, Raspberry Pi dedicated download page. So Raspberry Pi 4 and yeah, this is uh, the version we need. So we will just hit download here. And as soon as our download is ready, we will use Etcher to flash it to an SD card. So after flashing is complete, you just navigate to uh, the boot partition that is created on your SD card. Actually, if you're on Windows, for example, then it's the only partition you will see. So, I opened that partition, this is the root folder, but uh, and I'm using Visual Studio Code, but you can use anything else that is uh, able to browse folders and uh, open text files. So there's this file called network config, which you need to edit. And uh, just as in the previous video, we still have an example here. So we just need to uncomment the relevant parts. So I want to use Wi-Fi. So I command this one, then also this one, and I need DHCP. Yeah, optional true means that uh, yeah, the Pi should boot should be able to boot without it. And then we have an access point which is my home Wi-Fi. So I will just remove the rest and this is where you should um, enter your SSID. So if your router's SSID is SSID then you enter it here and then you enter the corresponding Wi-Fi password here. So once again, let me do this for my own uh, settings. Obviously you won't see it on the screen because I'm editing the file off screen, saving it. And after I've uh, added my Wi-Fi details here, I will just uh, plug the SD card into the Raspberry Pi and boot it. So after trying to boot the Raspberry Pi, here's a quick rundown on what happened. Yeah, I saw the light blinking and whatnot, and uh, it was booting, and I navigated here to my router's uh, client list, where it should appear as soon as it booted and uh, gets the Wi-Fi connection. But uh, as you can see, nothing is here that is Raspberry Pi related. Actually, this is just a portion of the clients, but still, uh, it's not here. That's the point. So, uh, Wi-Fi connection indeed failed and uh, had to look into what's going on. And uh, for um, just like an experiment's sake, I uh, plugged, unplugged the power from the Raspberry Pi and plugged it back in. Uh, so technically I rebooted it in an ugly way. And guess what? After rebooting, it appeared here. So it seems that um, a reboot is needed after uh, the first installation and uh, this made me thinking. So last week uh, there was uh, a viewer on the channel, on the original video, who said that uh, some extra parameter was needed, but I couldn't really understand uh, his uh, 
idea. Uh, I mean, um, he uh, suggested to edit some cloud init parameters and I was like, cloud init, I mean cloud, no cloud here, it's just a local server. So I had to look into cloud init a bit more and it turned out that cloud init is basically a part of Ubuntu that uh, makes you able to do something like post installation steps, like creating users and whatnot. And because uh, cloud init is present and uh, actually cloud init is responsible for doing a lot, like creating the default Ubuntu user and whatnot, uh, a restart is needed, but for some reason, uh, the default image that comes with Ubuntu does not uh, do this reboot. So you can actually use cloud in it to make it reboot for, reboot for you after the first installation. So I had to look into cloud in it documentation and uh, some examples and whatnot. And let me show you what you need to edit in addition to the original network configuration file to make it work. Okay, so we're back to editing files on the boot partition. And uh, here's a network config we used to edit. And then uh, we need to edit this other file called user-data. Uh, and uh, this is a uh, configuration for cloud in it. As you can see, a lot of things can be done with it and it's pretty much well documented or sort of uh, with examples and uh, is set up to create this default Ubuntu user. So you can even change that password here. But what we need to add is a couple of extra parameters like this. Power underscore state two spaces mode reboot. So this will instruct cloud in it to reboot the Raspberry Pi as soon as uh, post in installation process is done. And this is a first time reboot. So after uh, successfully completed it, um, for example, your network config file will disappear and this whole thing will not happen again unless you refresh the SD card or force uh, cloud in it to do its thing once again, but uh, that's outside the scope of this video. So with this parameter added, let's boot up the Raspberry Pi again. And ladies and gentlemen, finally it's working. So as you can see, I, can, uh, I already started the SSH uh, connection into the node and it's visible on the router as well. Although I must note that uh, booting took an awful lot of time, like two or three minutes, which is a lot considered to, I mean, compared to normal booting. So let's continue. Here we go. So default user and then default password. There we go. So as you can see, this is the first boot asking me to change the password and stuff like that. And let me do that. So disconnected, this is normal. Just let me go back to, again. Same user, new password. Okay, so we have a Raspberry Pi running in headless mode with Ubuntu 20 and this time is, is actually working, I mean, at the time of making this video. So once again, you have to wait some time. I'm not sure what Cloudinit is doing in the background, but you will have to wait uh, some amount of time, but eventually it will get to the, your, get to your Wi-Fi. Anyway, um, I hope this will help um, some of you guys who are struggling with this problem and uh, thanks for watching the video. If you are new to the channel and haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing and uh, hope to see you next time next week with another video. Bye! Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, hit like. If you want to help my channel and see more of my content, hit subscribe. If you want to check out behind the scenes and want to know more about me, then follow me on social media. You can find the links here. Thank you again and see you next time.